Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we have a math video about common denominators and the lowest common denominator. It is really a key idea to do well on any standardized math exam, specifically the ASVAB military placement exam, whether it's arithmetic reasoning or mathematical knowledge. So I'm going to go over what a common denominator is. I'm going to give you some examples and then some multiple choice problems. I think I have 12. The last two are pretty hard fraction problems. So what we're doing right now is really a topic that stumps a lot of people on the ASVAB common denominators. What a common denominator is, it is required so that you could add fractions together. So surprisingly, multiplying dividing fractions isn't that difficult, but adding and subtracting them is. So if I have a fraction say one-third plus five-sixths, I can't add those together until I have a common denominator. So the lowest LCD, the lowest, it's going to be the smallest number. The common part of this is what both of them will go into. Denominator is the bottom part of a fraction. So if I have a fraction like this, two thirds, two is a numerator, three is a denominator, the bottom number. This is one of the easier examples. What I really do to find the lowest common denominator is I'm looking at multiples of three, which are three, six, nine, twelve, and I'm looking at the multiples of six, six, twelve, eighteen, and I'm looking for the smallest one that's the same, and I could see it's 6. So if I want to add 1 3rd and 5 6, they both need that denominator of 6. To get 6 to 6, I don't have to do anything. That's why this is a little bit easier. But to get a third to 6, I would have to multiply this by 2. I can't just multiply something by 2. It'll change the whole value. So I multiply by the ratio 2 over 2. If the numerator and denominator are the same size, the same weight, this will always reduce to 1. So I'm really multiplying by 1 so I don't change the value. So I multiply across the top to get 2, multiply across the bottom to get 6. I have that 5, 6. I have that common denominator. Now I am allowed to add. I add across the top to get 7, and I keep that common denominator. So 2, 6 plus 5, 6, I add across the top and keep the common denominator. Let's take a look at another one. Let's say I have 1 half plus 1 quarter. This one in your head, you can think half of a dollar 50 cents, a quarter 25 cents. I'm expecting this to be 3 quarters. This needs that common denominator of 4. Again, I multiply it by a factor of 1. doesn't change the value of it. Now I have 2 over 4, 2 over 4, plus 1 over 4, which gives me 3 over 4, or 3 quarters. So hopefully, doing one that you understand or that you know the answer to helps why it makes sense. So let's take a look at another common denominator problem. This one's going to be a little harder. So now we're going to have to use multiplication. So now I have 2 fifths plus 1 quarter. Go ahead and pause the video. I'll give this one a try before I do it. Unpause the video. Watch how I do it. So 2 fifths plus 1 fourth. Well, the multiples of 5 be 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, 5 times 4, and so on. The multiples of 4, I will put this in blue, would be 4 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, so on. Now I'm looking across here to see the lowest one that's common, and it's 20. So I need to get a 20 in the denominator. I'm going to multiply this by 5 to get to that 20. I can't just multiply by 5. I can only multiply by a factor of 1. And again, 5 over 5 is equal to 1, so it's not changing the value of that fraction. This one I have to multiply by 4 
to get that 20. And again, I have to do it above and below. So I'm multiplying by one. This is going to give me 8 twentieths, 8 twentieths plus 5 twentieths. I have that common denominator. I keep that common denominator. And then I add across the top to get 13 twentieths. A lot of terminology, again, top of the fraction is numerator, bottom of the fraction is denominator. This thing that I'm multiplying by has to be the equivalent of a 1. So I could see that 4 goes into here one time, 4 goes into here one time. So that 1 over 1 is the equivalent of a 1. Okay, example number 3 right here. Let's look for the lowest common denominator here. I have an 8 and a 12. I could go 8, 16, 24. I see 12 is going to go into that. 8 times 4, 32. I could keep going. As soon as I see something that 12 is going to go into, I stop going. And then I have that 12 times 1, 12 times 2. There's my least common denominator there, 24. To get 12 to 24, I'm going to multiply by a 2. But I can't multiply by 2. I have to go 2 over 2. Pen's not working well. 2 over 2. To get 8 to 24, I have to multiply by a 3. And again, it has to be the equivalent of a 1. So now, 3 times 3 is 9 24 3 times 8. 3 8 and 9 24 are equivalents. They are equivalent fractions. They have the same meaning. This is just a reduced form of this. Plus 10 24. So I have that common denominator. Add across the top to get 19. Keep the common denominator there. So 3 8 plus 5 12. Correct answer 19 24. Okay, I have some multiple choice problems right here. These are kind of similar to what you might see on the ASVAB. Word problems are more arithmetic reasoning. Actual um, math problems are a lot more mathematical knowledge. So this would be more of the math knowledge side of the ASVAB. What is the least common denominator for 1 half plus 1 eighth? Pause the video, give it a try. Well, you know this is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8. And I already have an 8 there. So the least common denominator has to be answer D right there. Okay, number two right here. What's the least common denominator for these two? In my head, I'm going 4, 8, 12, 16. Nothing yet for 5. 20. 5 is going to go into 20. So then I know my common denominator is going to be 20. If I wanted to add these fractions together, I'd multiply this by 5 over 5, this by 4 over 4. Get that common denominator of 20. Add across the top. Keep the bottom the same. Okay, problem number three. What is the lowest common denominator for two thirds and three ninths? Three, six, nine. Well, this is going to have to multiply by three. So the lowest common denominator is going to be that nine right there. You can see why multiplication tables are so key. You really got to understand those things well. So you can run these numbers in your head pretty quick. What is the lowest common denominator here for 6 and 4? I'm going to start with the smaller number 4. I'm going 4, 8, 12. Well, 6 will go into 12. So 12 will be the lowest common denominator. They will both go into 24. And that could be a common denominator. However, I'd have to reduce the fraction when I was done. So if I wanted to add these fractions together, I want to get to 12. I'd multiply this by 2 over 2 to get 2 twelfths. Multiply this by 3 over 3 to get 3 twelfths. Add across the top 5. Keep the common denominator 12. Problem number 5 right here. Convert to an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 15. So I have 2 thirds. I want to multiply it by a factor of 1, and I want the answer to be 15. 
So three times what equals 15? Well, that's gonna have to be a five. I could only multiply by one so as not to change the value. So three times five gives me that 15. Two times five gives me 10. Convert two thirds to an equivalent fraction, 10 fifteenths, with a denominator of 15. I have that denominator of 15, as do all those answers, but the only equivalent one is answer C right here. Problem number six, which fraction is the equivalent of three-fourths? Well, I could go through my answers and see if I could reduce them to three-fourths, um, but I could also look at my answers and see that they all have 16 in the denominator. So I'm saying three-fourths times what factor of one will give me 16 in the denominator? So I know four times four gives me a 16th. The bottom's four, the top also has to be four to give me that value of one. Correct answer, 12 sixteenths, or answer D right here. Hey, moving right along, number seven. Rewrite the expression, one third plus one fifth, using the least common denominator. Three, nine, 12, 15. Five will go into 15. So I know I have one third plus one fifth. That's an expression, there is no equal sign. And I know I need 15 in the bottom. To get three to 15, I multiply by five over five. That's gonna give me five fifteenths. To get one fifth to 15, I multiply by three over three, and that'll give me three fifteenths. So I'm not adding them. If I were, it would be eight fifteenths, but I'm just looking for that expression over here, and I could see its answer. C. Number eight, when adding three tenths and two fifths, what is the equivalent expression with the lowest common denominator? Well, I'm gonna pick the lower one here, five, five ten, there it is right there. So it's gotta be a denominator of 10. I already have this 10, so it's gonna be three tenths. So I know it's not these. And then I gotta get this to a 10 I have to multiply by two, two over two is four tenths. Correct answer, three tenths plus four tenths. The answer would be seven tenths, but because I'm just looking for an equivalent expression, answer C. Okay, number nine. What is the lowest common denominator for the fractions? Oh, in the subtraction problem, so that must be a subtraction, it's a typo. Well, 10, 20, 30. 30 would be my lowest common denominator. How do I get 15 to 30? I have to multiply it by two. So I'm gonna multiply this by two over two. Plus, how do I get this three tenths to 30? I gotta multiply it by three over three. That's gonna give me 14 thirtieths plus nine 30th, what are we looking for here? What is the lowest common denominator for the fractions in this subtraction problem? Lowest common denominator is gonna be that 30. If I were to add those two fractions together, it would be what, 23 over 30? Uh, and then that, that, I guess, should have been addition, or this should have been subtract one or the other. Okay, number 10. This would be more like an arithmetic reasoning problem, because it's a word problem on the ASVAB. Carpenter needs to combine two pieces of wood, one measuring five twelfths and one measuring one six. What is a common denominator? So to add those fractions together, I would need that common denominator, six, 12, 18. I would multiply this by two over two to get that 12. It's not asking me to add them, it's just asking me for the common denominator. Correct answer, answer C right there. Okay, I just have two more fraction problems here. These really come up a lot, so I'd really practice this. Hopefully if this common denominator, lowest common denominator, never made sense, that explanation, those practice problems help for you to 
get it, get your head around it. It's really a very large part of any standardized math exam. You will see that idea in arithmetic reasoning and mathematical knowledge. It'll show itself in a lot of places, ratios, proportions, fractions. Uh, a lot of the word problems are always ratios and comparing amounts. Okay, so I'm looking at these two. What number is going to go in? A, what number will three and seven go into? So three, I could see it's only going to be a 21. So I'm going to have to take the original two thirds plus the six sevenths, and I'm going to have to multiply this by a seven to get it there. So I'm going to multiply this by a factor of one, seven over seven. Not changing the value, but that's going to give me 14 over 21. I have to multiply this by a three. I can't just multiply by three. So that's going to give me 18 over 21. Add across the top, get 32 over 21. Check my answers there. There's no answer like that. So it's going to be a mixed number, not an improper fraction like that. So I think of this fraction falling over this way. So 21 goes into 32. It goes in there one time. Then I put the 21 below it, and I get 1-1. One, one. So I get 1 and 11 21s. 1 and 11 21sts. I look up here, correct answer, answer D. Improper fraction converted to a mixed number. This 1 is like 21 over 21, right? 21 over 21, right? That 1 is like a 21 over 21. That's the equivalent of it. And then I have the 11 over 21. I add across the top to get 32. I keep that common denominator 21. Okay, last problem, number 12. New to the channel, think about subscribing, support the channel. Um, Share this video with anybody else. Understanding fractions, ratio, proportions, lowest common denominator is really essential. Uh, rather than do a practice test this time, I thought we'd just go back to some foundational skills. So if you like the video, please give it that thumbs up and share it. And then one more fraction problem here. I have 3 eighths plus 1 over 24. Common denominator is going to be 24. To get to 24, I'm going to multiply this by 3. 3 times 8 gives me that 24. Again, i got to have it like this to make it 9 over 24 plus 1 over 24. It's going to give me 10 over 24. That's my answer. But they, it's not my reduced answer. So 10 over 24, I could reduce that fraction. 2 will go into here 5 times. 2 will go into here 12 times. So 10 24 and 5 12 are equivalent fractions. But this is a reduced fraction. So the correct answer, answer C right there. And you could see 10 over 24 is equivalent of 5 12 because if I multiply this by a 1, it is going to give me 10 over 24. All right, well, I hope that was helpful. Thank you. Any questions at all, please post them in the comments. Thanks.